I get so many questions about whether there's enough of a difference between the first and second generation Apple pencils. And the answer is, it depends. Because the second generation pencil is better. But the question should be, is it better enough to justify the extra cost? Now, if we're looking at the price, at least in the US, the difference is $30. But when you look closer, it ends up being much more expensive. So how do you choose? Even before you actually start using them, you can see that the first generation pencil is longer, which is mostly due to the lightning plug and the cap. I know it seems like a small difference, but the second generation pencil does feel more like an actual pencil and it's more comfortable to hold. Now, as we continue to look at the differences, you'll see that Apple definitely implemented some user feedback that they got from the first generation into the design of the second generation pencil. Both pencils have the same diameter of 0.35 inches or 8.9 millimeters, but the second generation pencil has a flat edge, which makes it much more comfortable to hold. It's also a lot less slippery because it has a matte finish, unlike the glossy finish on the first generation pencil. Now, if you haven't had a chance to hold both of these in real life, but you have AirPods, the first generation Apple pencil so it kind of feels like the outside of the AirPods case, which in my opinion, isn't the best texture for a secure grip. Now, another advantage of the flat edge on the second gen pencil is that it's much less likely to roll off your desk. The good thing is that if you do end up going with the first generation pencil and it's too slippery for you, there's a ton of super affordable grips which solve both the grip and the rolling issue. Now I'll get to the lightning plug in just a minute, but from a design standpoint and from a user experience standpoint, the cap is super easy to lose. You have to take it off every time you want to charge the pencil and then you have to remember to put it back on. So as you can see, I'm using a third party one that I ended up buying on Amazon because I'm sure that I knocked the first one off the table at some point and now I can't find it. Now, speaking of charging, there are a few ways to charge the first generation pencil. The first is by plugging it into the lightning port on the iPad. And this is also how you initially pair it with the device. Now, this is my least favorite way to charge the pencil because it's sitting there just sticking out of the iPad and can very easily get damaged. And it also means that I can't charge my iPad and the first generation Apple Pencil at the same time. Now the second option is to use the lightning adapter that came with the pencil, which I also lost almost immediately and I never replaced. And then finally, you can get a charging cable with a lightning port, which is what I ended up doing and it's what I use most of the time. Now the second gen pencil takes care of the charging and pairing by attaching to the magnetic connector on the long side of your iPad. This is super convenient. You don't need any other accessories. And since you store the second generation pencil on the side of the iPad, iPad, it's always fully charged. In terms of battery life, both of them have lasted way longer than I've ever needed, as long as I start with 100%. And the issue is that with the first generation pencil, I just forget to charge it, and then I realize that I don't have any charge when I'm trying to use it. It's not a huge deal, and it charges very quickly, but it's just not something that I ever have to deal with with the second gen pencil. And in terms of the actual function, both pencils have the same tip, the same low latency, and the same level of precision. And one difference would be if you used one of them on an iPad Pro with ProMotion, which is Apple's adaptive refresh rate of 120 hertz. Because the screen can refresh at twice the rate of the other iPads, the pencil may appear more responsive. Now, finally, there's one more very important difference that you need to know about, which I'll get to in the compatibility section. Now, one advantage of the second generation pencil is that it has additional function with double tap, which essentially works as a button. Initially, I thought that you had to double tap on the flat edge, but it actually works even on the round parts of the pencil. Now, by default, double tap is set to switch between your current tool and the eraser, which is super convenient. And that's what I have mine set to. If you want a different function, then you can go to settings, Apple Pencil, and then change it to switch between current tool and last used or to show color palette. So whether you're using your Apple Pencil primarily for drawing or for taking notes, this could be a very helpful feature. And if you're looking for a whole list of Apple Pencil tips, watch that video when you're finished with this one. And when it comes to storing your Apple Pencil, again, I prefer for the second generation pencil because it attaches to the iPad itself. And this way I don't have to keep track of two separate items. What I end up doing with my iPad 9 is use the Logitech Slim Folio and that way I have a dedicated keyboard and a sleeve for the first gen pencil. If you watched my comparison of the Folio Touch and the Magic Keyboard, you saw that one of the issues that I have with the Magic Keyboard is that it doesn't really hold the Apple Pencil in place. So when I put it in my bag, the pencil gets knocked off.
off. And the same is true for the iPad mini six and the Apple smart folio, which is why I try to use cases or keyboard cases that hold the second gen pencil in place. Now, before I get to my recommendation, I want to talk about compatibility and why your choice of Apple pencil ends up being more expensive than just the $30. So the first and second generation pencils are not cross compatible. So each iPad is only compatible with one of them. If you're looking at the current lineup, then the only iPad that's compatible with the first generation pencil is the iPad 9, which starts at $329. The iPad mini six, the iPad air four, and then the 11 and 12.9 inch models of the iPad pro are only compatible with the second generation pencil. So if you want to use the second gen pencil, at the very least, you're looking at an additional 170 bucks to go from the iPad nine to the iPad mini six, plus the $30 difference in the price of the pencil for a total of 200 bucks. Now, if you want a larger display and you end up going with the iPad air four, which I absolutely love. Now you're looking at a $300 difference. The iPad nine is also the only iPad that still has an air gap in the display. So you can see a separation between the tip of the first gen pencil and the content that's being created. Every other iPad has a fully laminated display. So the display, the touch layer and the cover glass are fused into a single piece. This makes the image appear like it's painted right on top of the glass and the tip of the second generation pencil looks like it's actually touching the content. And as I mentioned earlier, the two iPad Pro models also have ProMotion, so some users may notice additional responsiveness from the higher refresh rate. So if budget is not a concern, a setup that includes the second generation pencil is a better option. And here's how I look at the choice. For what I do, which is take notes, markup, and sign documents, and then do photo and video editing and some light sketching, the iPad 9 and the first generation pencil work great. The non-laminated display isn't really an issue for me, and I'm getting the exact same results in terms of latency and accuracy. So if you're on a tighter budget, this is a great option. My main issues with the first gen pencils are that it's less comfortable to hold, it's less convenient to charge, and there are more parts to keep track of with a cap and the charging adapter. The second generation pencil is slightly smaller, feels more like an actual pencil. It has a flat edge, so it's more comfortable to hold. It pairs and charges on the side of the iPad, so it's always ready to go and it offers the double tap function. If you're an artist or an illustrator and your main function for this setup is drawing, you will get a better user experience with a second generation pencil and a fully laminated display. These iPads are extremely capable in terms of processing power. So I want you to think long terms when you're looking at this investment. Now you should find out which iPad has the best battery life. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.